Donnie, what are you doing today? Well, today, what we're getting into, this old truck, can you see the old truck there? This old 65 Chevrolet. If you go back, we got a series on this truck where we've been working on it. Today, the last, uh, last thing we tried to do was uh, bleed the brakes. Well, these front brakes, the calipers, the, the bleeders and the calipers, right here, these calipers. See? This little bleeder screw here won't come loose. And I had the line off, so when I had the line off, I got air in here. Now I can't bleed these out. So you got to be able to use those. So we're gonna take the, uh, the calipers loose, put new calipers on it. We got new brake shoes here for it. We're gonna show you how to do that. And we also, we've got new brake lines for it. Um, these front lines are rubber, and when they get old, they get dry rotted, and the inside of these lines will collapse. So when you hit the brakes, it locks the brakes on, and the fluid can't flow back out. So these old trucks, when they've been sitting a while, I like to change the brake lines, the calipers, and the brake shoes, because these shoes are basically, or these pads, are basically glued onto this piece of metal, and if uh, it sits too long, that glue could fall apart. So what we're gonna show you how to do today is put these calipers on, but we gotta get a wheel off. We got it jacked up here. We gotta get a wheel off and see if we can get that caliper off of there. And then we'll uh, we'll get back to you when we get the wheel off. So first we gotta take the wheel off and you know, got to have a Milwaukee to do that. Like I said, this is a 65 Chevrolet body, but it's got a 72 front end under. So it is a five lug instead of a six lug. 65 Chevrolet is a six lug. So let me see that. Right here is where we was having problems. That uh, bleeder screw would not come loose. I could not get it loose to save my behind. So that's why I'm replacing the whole system because that and the brakes are pretty war. I know these rotors look bad, but they're not uh, they're not that bad, really. We're gonna, uh, as soon as you hit the brakes a couple times, it'll knock the dust or uh, rust off of them and they'll be fine. Um, if need be, I can go back in and change those. So, but they're gonna get rusty again because this thing's not gonna be driven for the next probably six months or so till I get it all the way fixed. But you got to have stopping power. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do is pull these brakes and uh, see what we can come up with. Okay, y'all, so you take the bolt out here. Take a bolt out there. Take a bolt out here. Right here, there you go. Goes in here, that bolt comes out. And then, um, both of those bolts are uh, three eighths. 3 8 um, Allen. So you get those out. And then you got to pry up on on it from the bottom. It's kind of stuck a little bit. So I got a pry bar here that you just uh, you pry up on. And it comes right out like so. Keep prying. Pry bar is a little long, but we'll make it work here. it up like that and then it'll come right off so now it's out so there's the brake pads these here don't look the back one don't look that bad really it uh those are riveted on those are the old ones but this front one here it's wore out it's real close you can see there how thin it is so that's what we're doing and you see the uh there's nothing wrong with the uh, bearings or any of that stuff all this stuff's good basically what's holding it is that caliper won't slide back in 
So, and it's because of that dry rod and all that hose there. So I got that hose. We're gonna replace it as I showed you. See that dry rod right there? So we don't like that. We're gonna change it out and uh, put a new caliper and all on here. We'll try to uh, get a better video of this thing going back together. Try to coach my worker or my helper here to uh, hold the camera while I put it back together. Okay, y'all. This one here is the back one. The way you can tell that is it's flat here on the back side, and you have to put that little clip on there. And the way that clip works, you put the you put the brake pad down. These little these little wings here ride on the edges there. You put that down, and that locks in place like so. And your front one, the way you can tell that's your front, is it's got a lip on there. So that lip slides in there. The lip slides in there and holds on. Now, when you slide your rods back through, it's going to catch in there. So people say they get chatter when they hit their brakes. You squeak, 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 squeak. That's this piece here rubbing on here. It's making a squeaking noise. But this one has an extra pad. See that little pad there? Well, see that little pad there? That keeps it from squeaking so you don't need no brake quiet or none of that it won't squeak so put that one there like so like so make sure that one is locked down in there real good that one's there and then you take and flip it over like so and stick it right in there like that okay and then you get your screw put your screw this up a little oops yep screw so you get your screw you get your screw you hold it like so and your screw scroll slides in there like that and then you grab your second screw and your second screw goes in the bottom now the most important thing you need to know here is that bleeder needs to be up that's where everybody screws up when they do this and they're not exactly sure if that bleeder is down here you got it on the wrong side so if you take this one and put it on the other side the bleeder is going to be at the bottom so the bleeder always needs to be at the top and all the air that works all the air out of the system so your bleeder is always up top that's where a lot of people screw up bleeder up top so it don't matter what the part number is the bleeder's got to be on top Okay, y'all, we got a new caliper on. We got a new brake shoes in. Got a new bolts on. We got a new line on. We got it all locked in place and we lost a little brake fluid there. We bled it out. We got a little brake fluid down there. We got this wiped off because we had to bleed it up here. I basically got all the air out now. It'll spin. Okay, hit the button. It won't spin no more. Okay, hit it. I won't spin. The brakes are working. It, uh, that's pretty neat that you can take something for 50 bucks and fix the whole side. Put a new caliper, new brake pads, new brake line, new, uh, all new hardware on this side, new banjo bolt, everything. Cost me about, uh, 50 bucks a side. So, uh, 60 bucks a side. So you can work on these trucks relatively cheap. Um, they're not that expensive, but uh, you get satisfaction out of replacing, you know, basically the whole brake system in the front for hardly anything. So we got this done. We're gonna switch over and do the other side. We'll show you that one and uh, put the wheel back on it. Okay, y'all, that's how you put brakes on the front of these things. Uh, most all of the Chevrolets from say 70, 80, from 80, maybe even the 90s, the early 90s, all the way back to the, the 70s are basically the same thing. They all take that 3 8 uh, Allen wrench there to take them on and off. Take them off, push them back, and uh, put the new ones on. You know, if we was doing a. Uh, if we was doing a, without new calipers, just replacing the brakes, you take a C-clamp and you put on the back of the caliper 
and on the front of the brake pad and squeeze that caliper back together so that puck on the back, there's a big cylinder that comes in and out. That cylinder's all the way back. When it's flush back up against there, you're good to put your new pads on. And then you gotta get in your truck and pump the brakes about five or six times. And basically that moves that cylinder back out to where the brakes are only a fraction of an inch off the rotor. So when you hit the brakes, it don't have to like move inches. So anytime you do this, you need to get in your truck, pump the brakes six, eight, ten times, and that will get it all set back correctly, and then you'll be good to go again. So we've got them all bled out. We've got them all good. We've got brakes on this thing now. So next is going to be um, the drive shaft and the emergency brake. I don't have the emergency brake nor the drive shaft hooked up. So next is going to be we're going to tackle that and try to figure that out. With that automatic transmission back there, we've got to do something different. Um, so, but that's going to conclude this video. Um, tune back in on the next one. It's probably going to be the emergency brake. So, give us a thumbs up for filming it. Subscribe to the channel if you hadn't already. And we'll catch you on the next one.